Hello everyone. So welcome to my channel again. So in this uh, channel, I talk about the statistic uh, materials. So in our previous videos, we already talk about the linear regression, and we talk about how we can use the hypothesis test to check the linear relationship between our x and y. And also in our last video, we talk about the confidence intervals. So in the last video, we already say when we construct a linear regression model, or in other words, we construct an empirical model, we can use this model to help us to predict the value y if we have more information or new information of our x. So now in these videos, we will talk more about how we can use the linear regression line to predict of new observation. So let's see here in our in this channel, we always use the y equal beta zero plus beta one x plus epsilon to denote our linear uh, regression. So please uh, remember, here we have one assumption of our error term, the epsilon. We say our epsilon follows a normal distribution with the mean as zero and the variance is denoted by sigma square. So this sigma square generally is not equal one. So now this is uh, our models of linear regression then what happens if we have a new information? So a, that means we have a new value of our x. So here, generally, we denote it as a new information by x sub 0. When we want to predict the value of y, so actually this one is very straightforward. When we already have our estimator, in general, it's a least square estimator, beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. Then we can just plug in the value of our zero x zero into our equation beta zero hat plus beta one hat times x equal y. So by this way we can get a new prediction of our y. So we denote this by beta hat zero. So here zero it means this is a paired prediction for our x zero. And in our statistic regression, we always use the hat to denote the estimator. So here, because our uh, y0, we get this value based on our estimator of beta 0 and beta 1. So that's why here, for this y0, we also have the hat. So now we have this uh, new observation, or you say the new prediction of our y. Then what we want to do next? The next thing is we want to know what's the difference between our y0 hat and the true value of our y0. So in other words, we want to talk about the errors of the difference between these two values. So here we denote this by e sub p hat equal y0 and our y hat. So here, y0 is our true value of this uh, corresponding to x0. And then our y0 hat is, of course, our prediction. And if you recall previous, in our previous videos, we also use e to denote about this error uh, when we already have some estimator of our beta 0 and beta 1, uh, beta 0 and beta 1. So here, in this part, we use this e sub p hat to special, you know, say this is something about the prediction with our estimator of beta 0, beta y. So that's why here we have this p hat as our um, sub of our e. So now because original we already say for error term, we always assume this with a mean 0 and also the sigma uh, square for the normal distribution. So here, by this one, actually, of course, they have some calculation process, but here I can directly write down what's our property of this uh, EP hat. So first, of course, this is still a normal distribution. Uh, and here, for this one, 
the mean of our EP hat is also equal to zero, and then the variance. By the definition, is equal the variance of the difference between our y zero and y hat, and then what we can do here is we can use the property of our uh variance. So that means this variance is equal the variance of our y zero plus the variance of our y zero hat. So then what we can do is. Here, in fact, in our previous video, we already say what's the property of the variance of our y zero and y zero hat. So here, uh, of course, I will skip the computation here. But this one is for our y, uh, variance of y zero. The answer is sigma square, and then the variance of our y zero hat is sigma square times the parentheses one over uh, n. So here n is how many of the data sets uh, we have in our sample. And then uh, the plus the numerator is the square of our x0 minus the sample mean x bar and then divided by our uh, xss. Oh, here, so this is when we plug in these two variables. So for short, we can rewrite this as sigma squared times parentheses 1 plus 1 over n plus uh, the square of x0 minus uh, sample mean x bar divided by s uh, double x. So here, uh, s double x, we already used it several times, but I will still write this uh, equation here. So this is the equation for our s uh, double x. We already used it several times in our previous video. So then we said we want to talk more about our e, uh, p hat, the error term. So here now we already have this is the distribution of our e, uh, p hat. So it follows a normal distribution with mean x equal to zero, and the variance is equal to this equation, sigma squared times this parentheses and three term inside. Then let's see one more step. So the next step is what we can do if we want to know the confidence interval. Or in other words here, what we can call this, we call this as predict interval. So what is predict interval? So predict interval is if we give a confidence level, or here we say predict level alpha, then we want to find an interval. We say, okay, the our true value is between the y0 hat minus uh, me, the margin of error term, and then the right in the point is y0 hat plus our me, so the true value we'll have maybe 95% is in this interval, or maybe 99% uh, in uh, the true value is in this interval. So this is what we want to do. So you can say this is a confidence interval of our estimator of y, or we say this is a predict prediction interval of our confidence, uh, of our prediction of y. Okay, so. When we previous, we already talked how we can do the confidence interval, right? We have one video about how we do confidence interval. Uh, we have another video about how we do confidence interval in the linear regression. So here, what we will do is we will do the same steps about construct a confidence interval. The first step is always construct of our statistics. So here, the statistic we said originally is a of our error term is about a normal distribution, right? So we always say the normal distribution term minus its mean divided by its standard deviation should follow a standard normal distribution. And this is when we know the variance. But if we don't know the variance, uh, what we should do? So here, if we don't know the variance, then for the term here, uh, about this uh, sigma square of our uh, sigma square of our error term, 
we should use the estimator of our error term to substitute or to replace this sigma square. And then, in this case, when we construct the similar statistics, it will follow a t distribution. So let me write on this uh, term. So this one will become uh, follows a t distribution. So here for this one, again, similarly, this one we will have is degree of freedom is equal n minus 2. So this is actually very similar for our previous video. And now, because we already have this dis uh, distribution, then what we can do is now I will skip about the process, but I will just give you the final formula for our prediction interval. So when we give you a prediction level, or we say the prediction level alpha, then we can find the prediction interval of our beta zero hat for our x, the new information uh, x zero. This is equal to the left end points is y zero minus our t alpha over two comma n minus two times this square root. And then of course the right end point is our y zero hat and uh, plus uh, this term. So this is a left end point and right end point of our uh, predict uh, interval for 100, 1 minus alpha percentage uh, prediction level. So this is uh, the formula. So let me give one example about how we can use this film, uh, formula. So here let's look at this example. Okay, so for this question, what we do is we want to find the 95 percentage prediction interval for our y when our, we have a new value of our x is equal to 3. And then for our model, the linear regression model, we have the, this information. Our estimator of beta 0 is 5.04.05. The estimate of beta 1 is negative, uh, is a negative point, uh, 0.49. And then for our sample mean is of x is 4.2. The s uh, sub double x equals uh, 32.8. And our estimator of our error variance is 0.72. And the total numbers in our data set is 5. So actually, this information is the uh, same with our previous uh, examples in our previous uh, video for linear regression. So here, because the question is try to find the prediction interval of our y and when our x0 equals 3. So what's the first step? The first step is we should get our y hat, the prediction of our y. So that means the first step is we should compute what is our y zero hat. So in our question, we already know this one is equal when we plug in the value of our estimators and the new information of x zero. So in this question, it means we should get uh, use a calculator to compute this equation. So when we compute this equation, we will get our answer. So here for this part, the answer is 2.48. So this is our estimator. And then the next thing is if we want to use our formula here to compute our confidence as a prediction interval. So we should compute this ME. Uh, ME here is our uh, margin of error term. So in our margin of error term, similar to our confidence interval. So this is our ME. So to compute this ME here, uh, what we need is the formula is here. So the first thing is what is the value of our T alpha over two. So because in the original question, we say this is a 95 percentage. And so 95% is equal to our 100 times 
one minus alpha percentage. So that means for our alpha is equal to zero point zero five, and then because alpha equal to zero point zero five, so our alpha over two should equal to zero point zero twenty five. So this is alpha over two, and then for this n, n is a number of our data in the data set. So this is equal five. So we have five minus two. This it means we should use a three, and then the next thing is we just plug in all of the data into this formula. So we will get all of the information inside our formula inside our square root. So now the next step is just use our calculator. So by the answer of our calculator, we will get this uh value in the square root, and then by the table of our t distribution. We will get the value of our t point zero twenty five comma three. So then, after we multiply this by two value, so here I just uh one more thing give it to you. So the value for our t distribution, this one is equal three point one eight two. So this is our value for t distribution. And then, if we compute this two, we will get the answer of this part is equal is two point ninety nine. So this is our value here. And then, for our prediction interval, for our prediction interval is our y zero hat plus a、uh, m e for the right in the point and minus m e for our left in the point. So then, what we need to do is we just plug in all of our value here. So we will have this is equal this equation, and then the next thing is we just use our calculator to get the final answer for our left end point and right end point. So the final answer is, uh, the interval is negative point of fifty one and positive five point fifty. Seven. So this is our prediction interval. So this is the end of this video. And in our next video, I will talk about some more, uh, general information of linear regression and linear models. So please subscribe my uh channel. And、uh, if you have any comments, please leave it. Uh, or questions, please uh leave it under this uh videos. So see you in my next video.